are you folks seeing some of the stuff going around with regards to the Idaho 4 case? It's madness. It's not going to end anytime soon. This stuff will go on for years to come. Just wait until the Brian Koberger fangirls come along and unite. I'm curious to know how many people who watch this channel are entertaining some of the Idaho 4 conspiracy theories to cover up the cartel hit. Brian Koberger is innocent. He's been framed. The case is falling apart. All that stuff. Are you buying any of that? Are you getting sucked in? Because it seems like a lot of people are. And I kind of get it because the algorithm on all social media is well-tuned. It's powerful stuff. It's amazing how passionate and strongly some people believe these things to be true. When there is nothing to back it up. It's complete fiction and it's a load of bullshit. Some of the mainstream media, I feel, started a lot of this months ago. Seeds based off nothing were, were put in people's minds, especially young people who were watching the case. And they get an idea in their head and they want to be proven right. So despite so much evidence going in one direction, they want to go in a different one. And the media normalised a lot of this nonsense. You get a large percentage of their audience believe in them. Of course you do. I stopped making videos on the Idaho 4 because some of the stuff was just driving me bonkers. My last video was over six months ago. I was moaning about new station blaming Kaylee's dad. This channel, Newsmax, with over 2 million subs, 600 million views, then put a manual copyright claim on my channel for that. A false claim on my little old channel. But it was nice to know that someone there noticed, because that news report they did was despicable. News Nation, another station who acted appallingly throughout this. And that's not unique to the States. Over in the UK, Sky News, ITV, in the Nicola Bully case, some of the stuff they did was a disgrace. They fueled some of the stuff that was happening online on TikTok, Facebook, here on YouTube. And her inquest into her death is on at the moment. And even today, her family were coming out, talking, pleading with people to just leave them alone and look at the facts. It's shocking behaviour. But this is the new norm in true crime, the circus. And it's getting worse and worse every year. Watch now how news stations like Newsmax and Sky News with the Nicola Bully case will start really giving out about social media and YouTube in particular. But they started a lot of this and they love it. They love it because it gives them a chance to jump up on their pedestal. But they're a huge part of the circus, that crazy and dangerous circus that gets worse every year. On YouTube, I have a lot of the kind of dodgy channels filtered out of my recommendation feed. You get a few new ones popping up, but usually it's the same ones from past cases. So I don't see much of their stuff because I know they're cowboys. However, I did see a video the other day in my subscription feed about the Idaho 4 case, about Brian being innocent, and it was one of the stupidest videos I have ever seen in my life. This was a channel that I was subbed up to because of interrogation videos, I think. Crime Circus, very apt name for, for the channel. It was the second video of like a three-part series of why Brian Koberger is innocent. The guy in it is saying that the DNA found... <laughs> Brian's DNA found on a knife sheet under one of the victims. That's actually proof that he didn't do it when you think about it. I was like, what am I watching? Next level gaslighting, just insane stuff. And this isn't a small channel. This is a channel with over 300,000 subs. And this stuff, all this stuff is popular and it's going to get even more popular. He said he made a teeny tiny mistake in a previous video when he said that it was Brian's dad's DNA was found. It was like, how is, how is that a teeny tiny mistake? That's a fairly big mistake, especially coming from someone who's claimed to read everything and, and thousands and thousands of pages, but he clearly didn't read any of these documents properly. Also started pushing the DoorDash theory. The cops are clear that the identity of this man was confirmed, so do you think they'd write that if they didn't? Whole video just brainless, mindless stuff. He was calling out Jack D like like Jack D is the real killer and he's going to do something about it. 
people are very quick to forget that these are real people, real families that have gone through a tragedy that most people will never, ever even come close to. The ignorance in the comment section would make you dizzy. I felt like I was in a parallel universe reading some of them. But I do think maybe a lot of the views on this stuff are people over from TikTok, young people who've never read a PCA in their life or don't know how these cases usually work when it comes to the defence file emotions, stuff like that. But I'm just trying to make an excuse for them because it, it, it's a bit bonkers to me. And this was only one video in a three-part series. I, I didn't watch the other two because one, one was enough for me. But the whole notion that the evidence isn't strong here and there's all this dodgy stuff going on, that's just ludicrous. That's just silly. Don't take my word for it. Go listen to any attorney or prosecutor with experience like talk about this. They know. They all know. It's obvious. They got the guy. It's clear as day. It's all there on the PCA. Mainstream media is not helping. One, one little thing that they reported on that I don't believe to be true, at least it's not confirmed at all, is that one of the victim's IDs was found when they searched, I think, Brian's car or his apartment or something. That Yeah, they found an ID, but they never said it was from one of the victims. And every newspaper ran with this, all with one dodgy source, which is Jennifer Coffindaffer, as far as I can see. I have lost count of how many times she has pushed misinformation out there on her Twitter account and things that aren't true. They might be true, but she'll take she'll take a leap because she wants to get on TV or she wants to get a tweet that will get a load of likes or retweets. She's a clown. She's part of the circus. She's doing it for years and everyone puts her up on a pedestal because she's a former FBI agent. She done it last week with the Delphi case again, just wrong information putting out there. I bet there's people in the FBI looking at her and just being like, this is actually embarrassing for all of us that she walked there. Look what she's tweeting. That might turn out to be true, but Jennifer took a, a shot in the dark, or a complete shot in the dark. She doesn't have inside knowledge and like that sort of nonsense that is going to fuel this ever-growing Brian is innocent movement because... Everyone there is now saying, oh, look at this, look at the mainstream media, look at all these newspapers lying about Brian. He's been framed, he must be. Like, forget about that ID. This is an incredibly strong case, and there's massive evidence against him. The main one being the idiot left his DNA on the knife sheet there. A single source DNA. This is pretty much the best evidence that they could ask for. The only thing that beats this is if they had a video recording of it. Brian's defence is going to file every motion that they can think of, do whatever they can to try and... They need to get this DNA out. They have to do everything they can. So there's going to be many motions over the next few weeks and at the trial. But it's going to come in. I can't see them getting this out. There's no getting around it. And there's a mountain of evidence that all points towards one man. Even if you forget about the DNA... Forget about the phone data and the Elantra, which is massive. It's just so damning. How do these people who say Brian is being framed explain the Ziploc bags? Why, when he was arrested, he was standing in his kitchen in his jocks, separating rubbish into Ziploc bags? Well, is that normal behaviour? Is that the behaviour of someone who is innocent? Or throwing his rubbish in the neighbour's bins at 4am? He, he knew he left that there and he was doing everything he could to make sure they didn't get his DNA. Like, you can't rationalise that behaviour in any way. There is no police cover-up. I honestly think that they did a fantastic job. It won't be appreciated for a while yet. And I know some of the, the, the families of the victims are annoyed at some things, but from uh, the local cops, state, FBI, university, both universities... All the communication and interaction with other agencies and private labs. It was fantastic. There, there's so many examples of botched cases. This is not one of them. Back in December, everybody was up in a heap. Saying they, they don't know what they're doing. They have no leads. The case is going to go cold. It was all rubbish. It was all nonsense. It was just noise from the media. Everyone behind the scenes was working away. 
and it was a lovely mixture of just good old fashioned police work from rookie cops and then the use of modern technology and the DNA and the genealogy and all that. Like they nailed him. They nailed him. I've seen more than enough to convince me that Kohlberger did this. He thought he could get away with this, but his arrogance resulted in some huge mistakes. And the evidence is only going to get worse for him. He's given no alibi yet. That's going to be hilarious when that comes out. You're definitely going to get some excuse like he... They can't argue with the evidence, so he's going to have to say he touched a knife in a shop or probably I was outside, I heard a scream, I went in, I tried to save them. Some some bullshit like that, guaranteed. Yeah, he deserves to be innocent until proven guilty by a jury and he'll get that. I hope the jury is sitting there on day one with no knowledge of the case and just presuming that this guy is innocent because very quickly it'll be made clear to them that this is the guy and he's a monster. There is nothing, zero indication of any type of cover-up at all. No indication of family members involved, friends involved. There's nothing. It's all pure trash, nonsense. They got the guy and they will easily prove it at a trial. I don't believe that the media frenzy and the social media craziness will impact this case. There's just too much evidence there, thank God. But it will in the future. It's such a car crash waiting to happen in both the US and the UK. Everyone gets away with it and it just gets worse and worse every year. Eventually, the circus is going to completely ruin a case. It's going to cause people to lose their lives and it's going to happen soon. Most likely when a young white female with a social media presence dies in mysterious circumstances. I've never been so confident in a prediction in all my life, unfortunately. Good luck, God bless. Let me know what you think and I hope everyone has a nice day.